Hello. The theme of this video is risk and uncertainty in innovation projects. Uh, and uh, I would like to start by addressing or asking you what is technology. And actually, uh, technology is knowledge. I will provide you uh, some uh, dictionary definitions of technology. So I will read them here for you. Technology is the application of knowledge to reach practical goals. Application of knowledge. And another one. Technology is the application of scientific knowledge to the practical aims of human life. Okay, actually these definitions say that technology is knowledge about how to create new knowledge. Okay, now I underline the word knowledge here. What is innovation? The same thing here, few definitions. Innovation is the practical implementation of ideas that result in the introduction of new goods or services or improvement in offering goods or services. So that is more or less processes of providing goods and services. Or another definition, innovation as is a new or changed entity realizing or redistributing value. Both of these definitions of technology and innovation, they emphasize uh, the kind of a practical use or increase of value. And that is important uh, when we are talking about projects, uh, kind of a innovation projects or technology development projects, uh, when we use these words or product, product development projects. Okay, uh, here in this uh, picture uh, there are two axes. There is the uncertainty, increases upwards, and then there is uh, time. And actually this is a kind of a time uh, to potential market launch of a product or services, service. So this is five to ten years to market launch, three to five years to market launch, or one to two years to market launch. And uh, this curve uh, describes how we move from idea to market. And uh, actually this also describes uh, three different types of projects. Uh, there is a research project, There is technology, development project, and then there is a product development project, often referred to as, also, also referred to as NPD, for example, new product development or so that mostly refers to very uh, kind of a close to the market development of things where we already have a rather clear aim to uh, reach certain markets. And uh, they, these uh, projects are addressing uh, different uh, problems. What is possible? Can we do it? And how? And then in the business context, we are, of course, uh, in between these projects, we are asking, is it attractive? Do we want it? And uh, one message here is that we have different types of projects and we must manage them differently. And it is very beneficial to organize these things as different projects 
otherwise if we just have a kind of a impossible task of uh, trying to make something uh, ready for the market in just a few years but still uh, the idea is not that mature yet and uh, we should do research first or technology development first then we just frustrate the project people with uh, the wrong kinds of uh, targets of reaching the market if we are not there yet. So split your development into different projects and do it uh, uh, in a kind of a uh, in, in certain phases and, uh, and and continue with other projects which is organized maybe differently and uh, use different management approaches or management methods for those uh, projects. Uh, one interesting issue also uh, when we are talking about innovation projects and okay the word uh, in, innovation projects may, uh, is typically referring to all of, of, of these types of projects it can refer to any of these we are talking about R, R and D or research technology development and, and so on so the innovation quite broadly refers to uh, many or any of, of these uh, types of developments. Uh, and what the, when it comes to uncertainty I think that it is very important for you to uh, uh, understand two types of uncertainties. One type is uh, is uh, uncertainty type is, is, is technology uncertainty another type is market uncertainty and uh, this more or less refers this technology uncertainty to the question that can we take, do we have, ta uh, can we make that kind of a project, do we have capabilities to make this kind of a product? So kind of a product, is it possible to make it? And then the market uncertainty is connected to the customer. Is there anyone or are there uh, people who would like to pay for this kind of a product? Or this kind of a technology? So. I think that the innovation project management brings these two types of uncertainties quite uh, strongly uh, into the picture as main uncertainties in our projects. Now uh, in the next uh, flipboard paper I would like just to give you uh, some uh, definitions of words uh, that are connected to newness and um, I would uh, emphasize the fact that when we are talking about newness the, so the only thing that matters is whether it is new to the world or new to the market it can be a local market but if it's just new to our uh, own company or own, fir own firm so that is nothing because there are other companies that are making same kinds of a products uh, to customers and that is not new to the customers or the market so so I think that the real newness question uh, is connected to newness uh, that is connected to the new to the world or new to the market uh, uh, question. Uh, when it comes to newness we are talking often about radical innovation or incremental innovation. Radical innovation refers to whether that is really a totally new type of a product and many companies are uh, uh, trying to find out uh, practices uh, that would produce them uh, radical innovations but as radical innovations are really new and creative and so on so you cannot necessarily have two systematic ways of producing them it can be even that uh, they come by chance 
or by giving uh, the personnel just freedom to do whatever they would like to do uh, in, in some uh, parts of their uh, work, working weeks and then they would invent, someone would invent something new and, and, and that might become a very useful radical innovation that is really worthwhile even outside the company's current strategy. Or incremental innovation, which incremental innovation in the other uh, end of the continue means uh, the improvement of the current, current uh, products and current services. And often new product development refers to kind of at this end, but uh, also what new product development word refers to, so uh, it can also refer to a little bit different things, but not necessarily uh, radical innovations, uh, many times not uh, uh, referring to radical innovations, and therefore the new product development processes and so on are rather kind of a, a systematic and uh, very detailed in, in many times, because uh, the idea is to push something uh, to the market that we already know what we want to have there. Then uh, some sources in innovation research, they uh, refer to research projects, breakthrough projects, platform projects or derivative projects. And this is a kind of a same uh, idea uh, here uh, that uh, uh, the breakthrough projects have rather uh, big change to the product or the process of producing the uh, product. Uh, the platform uh, often uh, refers to uh, uh, product line, new product line or new market segment. So a kind of a platform and then derivative projects are more uh, specific uh, developments of uh, the products and markets that are focused on, on, on really specific, uh, specific markets with a very uh, specific and narrow uh, uh, product offering. Okay, uh, so more product change or process change and less uh, process uh, change or product change. Okay, now uh, let's uh, come back to this picture. And we remember how important knowledge is here, whether we talk about innovation or technology and we create new knowledge. So the interesting question is that what we know and what we don't know and we are talking about uncertainty, risk and uncertainty. And now uh, here in this picture uh, I want to emphasize uh, two types of uncertainties. First order uncertainty and second order uncertainty. In first order uncertainty in a project, you know the outcomes in advance, even if the outcomes is stochastic. So if we are tossing a coin, we know it uh, is either heads or tails. So then the second order uncertainty, you don't know the probabilities or not necessarily even the outcomes. So uh, with this first order uncertainty, we have the objective probability that is a priority, uh, a, a priority, uh, a pri sorry, a, a priori. And uh, then uh, we uh, have the kind of a statistical uh, knowledge about uh, what are the possible outcomes. Then we have uh, uh, here in second order uncertainty subjective probability, we have expert opinion estimates that we must produce uh, by experts, for example. And uh, we can uh, describe this also uh, with this kind of a continuum where we have certainty or compl compl uh, complete ignorance. And uh, in this certainty side, we have known unknown. And in this complete ignorance side, we have unknown unknown. And again, I'm repeating here this uh, objective probability and subjective probability and a priori and statistical and estimate and expert opinion so that uh, to kind of underline this 
uh, thinking what I here explained. And when we move here uh, from left to right, so uh, we move towards ambiguity, fuzziness, lack of preciseness and vagueness, and uh, then in this end there is fundamental uncertainty, true ambiguity. Very many interesting questions also that do the experts who are providing their opinions, do they know how much they know? That, that is really a kind of a complicated or complex uh, issue. Then this was one of the main messages, also the innovation uh, kind of a uh, project and, and, and uncertainty, but then uh, when we moved towards uh, the question of what we know and whether there are known unknowns or unknown unknowns, I would like still to provide you one framework that uh, was uh, developed uh, a long time ago uh, by one strategist. Uh, and uh, that is about information flow and decision making and how filters matter, filters in between the environment and managerial act, uh, action. So we have here the environment and here we have the managerial act, action. And uh, we observe the environment, we have data. Uh, we make some perception about the data, then we have information uh, based on our reception and then that leads to the action. But then this uh, strategy uh, scholar uh, emphasizes also uh, the um, importance of filters and how uh, filters uh, inhibit uh, the uh, make uh, information flow and, 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 and making, uh, uh, let's say, appropriate decisions. So first we have a surveillance filter. A guy in a project or in an organization so uh, uh, might uh, have some problems of uh, even recognizing what there is in the environment. But if he recognizes something in the environment, so there he uh, sees something in the environment. Then there is the mentality filter, whether he can make sense what this, what he sees uh, uh, means to him or to the organization or the project or the firm. So uh, is he capable to uh, um, make right kinds of a conclusions or evaluations whether this, this uh, is uh, worthwhile uh, and uh, what kind of a, uh, action probably could be taken. Then there is in an organization there is the power filter and not only between uh, the subordinate pe people and uh, superiors but also there is a kind of a expert power. So in a project if a, a mechanical engineer sees that uh, there are some problems in the electrical engineer's uh, plans, ele ele electricif uh, electrification plans, so normally uh, the mechanical engineer doesn't go, doesn't want to go to the electrical engineer and say that, hey, uh, this this is your area, but I can see that there is problem. You cannot uh, manage this electrical. Uh, matters and so on. So th that is not only between uh, the subordinates and the superiors, uh, but that can be also expert power. And that also uh, inhibits uh, the process of uh, the information leading to action. And you can, of course, you can understand that if, if, if these are filters and uh, if we take kind of a 10 percent uh, of here uh, of not seeing 90% and if we take 10% uh, well 90% off here and, and uh, all, only 10% is left and then 10% uh, uh, is left about uh, whether we make the right kind of a 
judgment of how, what this means to us and our business. And then if there is also the power filter, so we suddenly we have 0 0.001 and, or something like that uh, probability of uh, some uh, important thing in the environment uh, leading uh, to right kind of a conclusions and action uh, in the organization. Okay, you might uh, want to think about uh, this. Uh, this was all what I wanted to say about innovation uh, projects and risk and uncertainty in this video. See you. Bye.